The Dead Sea is one of Israel's most enduring tourist attractions. Tourists from around the world have continued to come here for the salt-rich waters, the thermal sulfur mineral springs and year-round sunny weather. Not to mention the fact that you can tell all your friends you've been to the lowest point on earth. <laughs> Well, people come to the Dead Sea for many reasons, but mainly for health reasons. If we take people who suffer, for example, from skin problems like psoriasis, then the Dead Sea and the sunshine is fantastic for them. And if we take people who suffer from rheumatism, uh, arthritis, even some uh, respiratory uh, problems, then the black mud and the sulfur water are fantastic for them. Not only is this a draw for people looking for curative health treatments, the Dead Sea is also considered one of the world's cultural and ecological treasures. And while it's not technically dead, it is dying, or should I say drying up. 24 years ago, the sea was right over here. We can smell it, we can touch it, we can feel it. Now we have to chase after it. It's like going really far distance and it's keep on running from us. The Dead Sea is dropping by a staggering one meter a year. 20 years ago, visitors to the Ein Gedi Spa needed only take a few steps to float in the salty waters. Now they have to take a train. Environmentalists say this is because its main freshwater tributary, the Jordan River, is being sucked dry. Israel, Jordan, Syria and to a smaller degree Lebanon have taken all the water for drinking and agriculture. And what used to be a flourishing river is now barely a trickle. From the air you can see the white line of salt where the water level has dropped in the last year. On the ground, parts of the Israeli highway are now at risk of caving in. There is a plan to save the Dead Sea, but like everything else in the Middle East, it's a tricky negotiation between three governments, fraught with bureaucracy and delays. Israeli Vice Premier Shimon Peres is championing what he's calling a peace conduit, a project that includes a 200-kilometer pipeline to pump water from the Red Sea to replenish the Dead Sea. But regular seawater contains around 40 grams of salt per kilogram of water, compared to 350 grams here in the Dead Sea. Now, environmentalists fear this ambitious plan would drastically alter the water composition, turning this spectacular blue or red. Here's one group that won't be deterred. Believe it or not, this is a group of German tourists who've come to the Middle East to learn about the politics of water. Gittem Bromberg from Friends of the Earth was just one of the experts showing the group around this abandoned hotel on the West Bank, formerly known as the Lido. Back in the 50s, and the water level of the Dead Sea would come uh, to, the, to the top of those stairs over there. And of course that was the major attraction of this wonderful place to drink Arabic coffee on the shores of the Dead Sea. Today it's over a kilometre away. These tourists have just come back from the Jordan River, an integral part in the solution to the Dead Sea problem. We believe in tourism. Um, we think that tourism is the economic engine that can help save both the Dead Sea and the Jordan River. At the moment, people, tourists, cannot come down to the Jordan River because it's a closed military area, because what's flowing in the river is mostly sewerage. And by bringing more tourist groups, we create the economic incentives to bring back the fresh water, to replenish the Jordan River, and to save the Dead Sea. Even if the waters dry up altogether, hoteliers and spa owners say they've now carved out a name for themselves in the area, selling Dead Sea products and offering a range of holistic and Dead Sea-inspired treatments. It's services like these that could well be the lifeblood for the industry here in the future. Here you just step into the area and you are in the largest spa on earth and we are destroying it. <laughs>